place the Inquisition is in many respects not a new institution. It follows from very ancient practices, from the practices of Inquisitio, a Roman inquiry. What the Inquisition does is it attempts to, in a sense, find out the truth about certain types of behavior and so on. So in that respect, institutionally, the Inquisition is part of a long trajectory in Western history, which goes back to a world before Christianity. It's a judicial procedure of finding truth, of finding what has taken place. But in some other respects, the Inquisition marks a dramatic shift in mentality in the medieval West. An incredible mental change in the way in which you deal with dissent, with heterodoxy. And I have to place the Inquisition within a certain mental and cultural context. I want to place the Inquisition in the context of a series of changes that are coming upon Christianity at the beginning of the 13th century that are parallel by the growing sense of a national and collective identity, by the growing sense of people that they are different from others, by whole systems of representations which lead people to imagine themselves, to use Benedict Anderson's wonderful terms in his imagined communities, that communities are created in the mind, that they are imagined in the mind before they become actual reality. And that one of the ways in which you imagine communities and construct identities is essentially to the creation of otherness. And that the early 13th century is a period particularly keen in creating otherness, in creating difference, in articulating these causes of difference that are going to separate not only Jews and Muslims and heretics and those suffering from leprosy from the rest of society. That these are discourses of inclusion and exclusion which become not only articulated in the south of France but throughout the medieval west. That the Inquisition in a sense follows from the Lateran Council that condemns courtly love as heretical, that follows from a Lateran Council that forces Jews to wear and identify a mark that will, in a sense, segregate them from society. That the Inquisition also follows from a Lateran Council that defines the leper as polluted and sinful and forces those suffering from leprosy to engage in a ritual and a ceremony in which they are declared death to the world. They are declared dead and they have to go and be buried in a sense that they become the other who cannot be touched, who is polluted. That the marks in their bodies is essentially a sign and symbol of the sinfulness. So that in a sense the Inquisition comes about as a very broad movement which leads to the separation of some people from others. But that the Inquisition also functions as a kind of social and political and economic barrier, a monitoring device. And that the Inquisition is a way in which you can confiscate the properties of those who you believe to be heretical or who you believe to be your enemies. And therefore, the diocesan and papal inquisition comes into being in the early 13th century as a way of monitoring and controlling populations. But there is more to that. The way in which Christianity had handled heresy before was by, in a sense, attempting to convince them. This is what St. Dominic does at the very beginning of the preaching in the Languedoc. He tries to convince them. He tries to bring them back into the fold. He tries, in a sense, to persuade them as to the truth of Christianity. 
What we see now is that persuasion or segregation of the heretic from the Christian community, the banishing of the heretic from the Christian community is now replaced by physical forms of punishment, torture, burning at the stake. Now, please understand, torture is as old as history. And torture has been practiced in Western Europe all throughout this history. There is, host there is torture in the Middle Ages, as there was torture in the Roman world. It is a proper and legal and accepted form of inquiry. That is to say, it is expected that you will torture prisoners to elicit truth from them. And burning at the stake was also known, and occasionally from time to time, there is people who are burned as a form of punishment. But it was never, never before so prevalent, so widespread, and so supported by the population as a whole. What we're really talking about here is a dramatic mental shift, an extraordinary transformation, which leads people to embrace this public events, these are spectacles of power in which someone is burned for being a heretic as an integral part of a civilization. And this support, and we must call it that, it is support from below for these kinds of tortures and punishment reveals the way in which the mass of the population led by mendicants in a sense embraces these spectacles as the appropriate form to deal with those who are different from you. Which is what lead historians so, such as R.I. Moore or even someone like Carlo Ginsberg in the introduction to his work Ecstasies to describe this as the rise of persecuting societies. It is not as if there have not been persecutions before of course there have been, but it is that now we have the development of a persecuting mentality in which the budding national identities are being articulated through the persecutions of those who are different and who can be exemplary punished in front of everyone. And that it is a way in which you bind the community in the capture, torture, and execution of someone who by his, his or her deeds, by his betrayal of orthodoxy, is in a sense damaging the very lifeline of Christendom. You have to understand what is at work here. It is the belief that a heretic or a witch or a leper or a Jew or a Muslim or later on, all women are people who are engaged in a willful attack against Christianity, against a Christian world, and that their execution, their punishment, their torture is a way in which you rally around all the people and give them a form of a common identity, so that it is perhaps incorrect to place the beginnings of persecuting societies on this particular age. And some of the historians, David Nirenberg, among them in communities of violence, have argued the contrary, that each persecutory stage in our long trajectory as Westerners has to be placed within a specific local context, within the moment, the locality, the geography. But even if that is so, even if there is not a teleology of violence leading inexorably to the horrors of the 20th century, even if that is so, it is very clear as well that there's something that changes dramatically in the 13th century, in the way in which people think of themselves and think of those who are not like them within their own societies. And that the Inquisition is the instrument of the church and of the state, in a sense, to ferret out 